Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Are we getting Imperial Walkers in Star Wars Legion? Well, that's just one of the questions we're going to talk about today. We got a lot of information from last night's Ask Me Anything from Fantasy Flight's head of studio, Andrew Navarro. And it was very illuminating. I'm going to talk about some of the highlights, some of the really interesting things that were kind of brought up. I want to talk about all of that, uh, but let me remind you guys, there is still time left to enter the big giveaway for the $100 Amazon gift card. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It will automatically be entered to win. We will be posting the uh, winter, the winner of that uh, at the end of the first week of September, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, click that bell for alerts so you don't miss out on any of the new content. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and talk about a lot of the questions and stuff that were answered. I'm going to kind of go from game to game because a lot of games we're talking about. I'll probably miss some things, but I'm going to hit all those things that I think were most, most interesting. First off, Legion, right? We're going to talk about these walkers, that, you know, because this was asked. I actually asked about this kind of as a joke, not really thinking that I was going to get an answer. But sure enough, um, Andrew Navarro loves AT-ATs. Or, or ATATs, but I always call them ad ads. Uh, he loves them. He would totally want this to happen. We both, you know, everybody kind of recognizes. Yeah, it would be huge. It'd be be massive. It, you know, it'd be a very very expensive thing. Um, but yeah, he if there's a way to make it work, he wants them to try to make it work. It really just boils down to, you know, can they find a way to make it make sense and make it actually work? But uh, but if so, he's like a hundred percent on board. Put them in the game if if we possibly can. So if there's a way to do it, they'll find it. Now it may not be fully to scale. I mean, you know, they may have to tone it down a little bit. It may be a sliding scale. And you know, honestly, I'm okay with that. I've wanted this, and ever since they first announced Legion, I was thinking this is the whole purpose of making a game like that is to be able to have these guys. And so if we can make this happen by any means necessary, I am absolutely on board. So uh, it's glad to hear that uh, Andrew Navarro is also on Team Adat. -AT. So that's very cool. Um, so yeah, uh, but let me know in, in down in the comment section what you guys think. Would you want to see Adats and Legion? I, I think that's super super exciting. So uh, there was some more Legion news. Uh, there were, they talked about the sequel trilogy factions quite a bit. That how they were originally intended to be in the game, um, but then some, the Clone Wars kind of hype shifted and they kind of shifted focus where they were going with Legion. Um, but the you know, there's still the possibility to do sequel trilogy factions in this and all of the other games. But the problem right now is that there's just really not enough content um, out there. I mean, they're, they're not done with the sequel trilogy yet. I mean, maybe after Episode Nine and maybe after Resistance, you know, comes out, then there may be, you know, m they'll be more flushed out. But like, they have a hard time trying to compete with all of the developed movies and content and, and shows and all of the characters and heroes and vehicles and ships and stuff that are out there for the Clone Wars, they just don't have quite that depth in the sequel trilogy, so that's one of the reasons they shifted. Um, he'd also love to do Ewoks, there's a whole lot of that. Um, but there's also, this is really big, like at the very end of the video they talked about Legion, because there's a live stream coming Tuesday, uh, and, and they're going to be do talking about a points rebalance for Legion. Now this is a really big deal. Uh, and they just like mentioned it off the cuff. It's like, oh yeah, we're gonna talk about the the points rebalance. And we're like, what? I mean, they talked a little bit. Some people were asking like, hey, you know, are you gonna errata certain things? And like, well, if we were to do that, we'd have to do it the old-fashioned way. Because some people ask, are you gonna do an app for something like Star Wars Legion uh, to be able to deal with? you know, something that might be broken or have to be errated, you know, you can just do the app. They're like, no, no, we're just, you know, if we did it for Legion, it would have to be done the old-fashioned way. And then, you know, at the very end of the video, they're like, oh, yeah, don't forget to check it. Now, Tuesday was supposed to be the live stream where they demo Operative Luke and Operative Vader and kind of showcase them in a battle of Empire versus Rebellion. But then Evan said, um, and it'll be, the, we're going to talk about the points rebalance. And you're like, wait, what? Well, excuse me? And and then they, they they turned it off right there. So I'm like, are you are you? Did you just throw a grenade at us? So apparently, unless of course he was mistaken, which it didn't sound like he was mistaken. So uh, apparently Tuesday we're going to be seeing some kind of points rebalance in Legion. So I would love to hear from you guys. What do you think is going to be rebalanced? I think the number one contender is maybe snowspeeders, with number two being ATSTs. 
uh, being, you know, maybe having some kind of points reduction because a lot of people have been complaining about power creep. I would not complain if Tauntauns went up to like 275 points each. I would not complain very much about that. It might be a great idea. Let me know if you think maybe I'm, maybe I'm aiming too low. Maybe they need to be 300 points each. Should Tauntauns be 300 points each? Obviously, no, that's absurd. But yes, so Legion, big, big stuff coming. Um, also, they kind of hinted that we're getting Gungans and Darth Maul at some point. So, um, you know, or, or they were asked about those specifically, and he was just like, hmm, you know, like, like, you know, you can kind of tell based on an answer whether something is ab an absolute no, um, a maybe, like, oh, that sounds cool. Or an absolute yes, where they're like, hmm, stay tuned, you know, and it, we got the, that stay tuned answer for that. So um, it might have been just one of the two. I think Darth Maul is a given, and I think Gungans are very likely, since they've been talked about twice now at, with, through, at various different interviews and Q&A sessions. So I think Gungans are an absolute, uh, an absolute thing that's coming. Because they've talked about sub-factions already, and so Gungans would be a perfect sub-faction to do. And I'm really a big fan of Gungans. So, Legion, uh, the biggest news there was really the points rebalance, uh, but we're not really, we don't really know much about it. All we know is, watch Tuesday, if I'm, uh, you know, not completely underwater or out of power, because uh, this hurricane is, and I live in Florida, this hurricane is coming, so if, uh, if it completely, you know, destroys us all, then I won't not be able to cover it. But other than that... Uh, look for some coverage on the uh, whatever the news we get from this points rebalance. Um, a lot of talk about Imperial Assault, Imperial Assault, Imperial Assault, Imperial Assault. Basically, no, 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 no more Imperial Assault physical product of any type uh, was talked about. Now, this has been asked over and over and over again, and it's like people don't um, either either don't get the message or try are trying to come up with different wordings like would you ever consider it again but the, basically the answer is it's for business reasons they can't make anything else for imperial assault not even a conversion kit to allow legion miniatures to be used in imperial assault and just no, nothing more for imperial assault ever again uh, unless it's some type of update through the app um, and that basically has you know I don't have all of the facts, but from what I have heard, it has to do with Hasbro having the board game rights. Hasbro, uh, apparently now, from what I have heard, they actually get uh, a significant amount of the profits from every sale of anything that's ever made for Imperial Assault. So uh, they are, you know, and so it's really, FFG was not able to actually even make any money off of Imperial Assault, or so I have been told. So like, it's just not an effective business model. They just can't. You know, and that's, I think that's, you know, without getting into specifics, he just said for business reasons, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's it's something along those lines. As, as, as a while back, they somehow Imperial Assault got reclassified as a board game, uh, and uh, and Hasbro basically screwed them out of it, or, or, or something like that. I'm not sure of the exact story, but that's, that's what I've heard through the rumor mill, and it seems, you know, it seems to be a close enough version of the story to sync up with events. Um, and it's kind of a shame because I wish the licenses worked differently, but, you know, that's the, unfortunately the world we live in. Um, similar to Imperial Assault, though, Descent, um, there were a lot of questions about Descent, first edition and second edition, no more product for either of those. They're not doing a third edition, but they do have some other big, uh, exciting announcement planned in the, uh, related to Descent, whether or not that's, um, you know, another minis game? I don't think so because they only have so much miniature production that they can do and they're kind of at capacity for that. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a Descent LCG. Is That's going to be my guess. We'll see. Uh, but Andrew Navarro hinted there's a major new uh, Descent thing coming out and FFG loves to do them some LCGs. They love, love it, love it, love it, the LCGs. So it would just make sense that they do a Terranoth Descent style dungeon crawl cooperative LCG, you know, in, in the style of like maybe the Marvel LCG or some of their other LCGs. That's That would be my guess. We'll see if I'm right. X-Wing, X-Wing, uh, they were asking, you know, are you going to get do any more new ships for the original three factions, Rebels, Empire, and Scum? And, uh, you know, and obviously, you know, obviously they will at some point when he, but Andrew Navarro did say there is a new Imperial ship coming next year, a new Imperial ship. Uh, and he said, oh, and you guys can probably guess what it is. And I was like, oh, well, that's, you know, that's pretty interesting because the only one that I would really, really expect it to be in the game by now was the Thai Brute. 
from Solo, a Star Wars story. And, uh, you know, but this one kind of was kind of first debuted in that trailer for Solo, but this was before X-Wing 2.0. And so we were all like, well, you know, it was before X-Wing 2.0 came out, so I think people might have expected this one to still come out. Uh, even, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure if the trailer came out before 2.0 was announced or not, but it was very close to that same proximity. So this is, you know, this has been something that's been expected for a long, long time, and it still hasn't come out yet. So my guess is the next Imperial ship will be the TIE Brute from Solo. Uh, Cannon-mounted TIE or something like that. But oh, you know, let me know if you think it's something else. I mean, he seemed like he was certain that everybody knew exactly what it was going to be. He's like, I'm sure you guys know what it is. And I'm like... I don't know what it is, but if I had to guess, I would say the tie brute. We'll see if I'm right. Armada, I got a lot of questions answered for Armada, which is cool because I had a couple of mine asked and answered, which is great. Um, and, uh, and, and and because the one question I get asked most of all, most all the time is, you know, people ask me, you know, when is Clone Wars coming out? Um, you know, they're targeting the end of next year. I talked about that. Uh, it's definitely going to be amazing, I'm sure of that, but people just keep asking me. I think I'm actually going to make a dedicated video uh, about this particular subject, but um, I did ask, are they going to ramp up production because, you know, it's we've had such a slow release schedule for Armada expansion. When this comes out, are they going to increase the release schedule of new expansions? And it was an absolute yes. Yes, we totally are. Um, and then it will eventually slow down again, but for a while it's going to be very rapid, and, and that's great. Um, so that was very good information, good news to hear. I expected that much anyway, but it's great to get them to, to talk about that, you know, especially on camera. Um, also was asked, will they be making any more, uh, you know, Rebel and Imperial ships uh, once, you know, Clone Wars is, is revealed? And that was um, also a, an absolute yes. Uh, so that's good. Um, now, they, they did say that eventually the, the release schedule will kind of slow back down a little bit. It's not going to stay super fast forever, but they will get these new factions ramped up, and then they'll go back to doing that. Um, they also confirmed that after the Starhawk and uh, the Onager, uh, they don't, they, nothing else until the Clone Wars. So, the, that's the, so we're still going to have a little bit of a gap after uh, the next wave comes out, which I believe they did classify as Wave 8. Um, so once Wave 8, which is the Starhawk and Onager, come out, uh, we will have a big break until Clone Wars comes out. So that is one thing. Um, also, they did clarify no Rebel Huge ship, uh, but they did say you know there was a, a huge ship they could have done for the Rebels, but it just wouldn't have made sense, and uh, you, they, there wouldn't have been enough demand, and it didn't seem like it was worth the risk to do. And I think they were talking about the Viscount. Um, uh, and, and so, like, it's just the, like there's a whole lot you know, that goes into making huge ships, and that they're very, very expensive to make, and it's a huge risk because if it doesn't sell enough, then they lose money and stuff. And um, while the executor is very, very recognizable, the Viscount, a, a, sm a much smaller subsection of people would have bought that, and and, and, I, and it makes sense from a business standpoint. But at the same time, they did point out how big the Starhawk is, and how you know it seems like that might also. Um, hold people over, and that might be the asymmetrical equivalent in, in some ways, perhaps. Um, I certainly think that that's, you know, looking at its dice and its shields, it seems like it's um, somebody that could stand up to a Super Star Destroyer, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but hopefully we'll get more huge ships when it comes to the Clone Wars. Um, but they did say they would not be doing another ship quite as big as the uh, Executor again, or at least there's no plans to at this time. Um, Keyforge has some great announcements. Uh, they were talking about, uh, you know, like how it would be fun if they could do some more stuff in the world of Keyforge and the Crucible, like a minis game or whatever. There's cool things that are like possible. But they talked about uh, how there is a multiplayer rule set that's in the works, which is really, really cool. I'm very, very excited about that because I, my number one problem with a lot of two player games is when you have three people show up to play. It happens all the time, uh, so I I, I just uh, I, I love the fact that they're working on a multiplayer way to play Keyforge. I think that's just fantastic. I'm very excited about that. Um, Outer Rim was talked about a little bit, as well as a couple of their other board games. Uh, people asked about Rebellion. People were asking about Twilight Imperium. A lot of like uh, a lot of non answers for those, um, but it seems like they're certainly possible. Um, you know, but uh, same thing with Outer Rim. Um, you know, like, you know, we're going to wait and see. We, like, uh, you kind of get the same answer for this as you get for Twilight Imperium. They're expandable games, uh, but I think it's just too early. They're not ready to uh, announce or, you know, confirm an expansion just yet. Uh, 
Rebellion doesn't seem like they're going to do that, but so he was asked, would you consider maybe a Clone Wars era of Rebellion? He seemed like he liked that idea, but that's not something that they're uh, committed to doing. He didn't say that that was in the works. He just said, oh, that sounds cool. You know, and I like the idea, uh, you know, when, when they say it sounds cool to me, that's like, no, we don't have a plan to do that, but that's not a bad idea. You know, but the problem is they only have so much production capacity, so certain things, uh, you know, don't make it through the bottleneck of, that's a great idea, but that doesn't, Kind of meet the cutoff of the things that we can actually send into production and so there you know there you have it um and the last thing i want to talk about is uh marvel there were some marvel questions and there was a really really interesting uh answer to one of these where some people asked uh, a lot of people asked about the lcg but some people asked hey are you um going to be making any more board games like specifically are you going to be able to do uh, a Marvel board game now that you've got the Marvel license and the answer goes he goes well it depends how do you define a board game and I, I thought that was very telling because that kind of goes back to the Imperial Assault problems just like with Hasbro um, you know makes Star Wars you know board games they also have Marvel licenses you know all the Marvel Legends and all that stuff and I believe they have the Marvel board game license as well like so if they wanted to do Marvel Monopoly or whatever it's going to be a Hasbro product uh, so you know they that's, there's a reason why this is an LCG and not just a you know a board game. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do make a standalone single box game, but it probably will not have a board on it. They will probably have to get creative in how they do it. Um, but I look forward to that because I really like FFG's standalone games. I think every one I've played I've really enjoyed. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I look forward to seeing what they can come up with. I wouldn't mind seeing some type of tile laying or hex based game, something that has a dynamic board, but that is not a, a standard board, something that can somehow manage to not be classified as a board game. But it'll be interesting because you might think that they would do a miniatures game, but Atomic Mass Games is doing the miniature stuff, and that makes sense to kind of offload some of that miniature produ production capability to another studio. And I think that's about it. Uh, that's about all of my highlights. Um, but you can check out the video itself. Uh, FFG Live is like they've been going live three or four times a week. It's been uh, it's been pretty cool. You're able to get a lot of access, a lot of information that way. Um, and then uh, let's hope they do put ad ads in uh, in Legion. Uh, well, I I hope they do that. But uh, you know maybe I'm the minority here. I'd love to hear from you guys. See what you think about it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I will uh, conclude there. And uh, you know there's there was more stuff that I didn't. Uh, talk about, but I thought that I, I think I kind of got all of the highlights and the really the relevant pieces, and uh, that's gonna. Oh, and Destiny is uh, pushed back until um, next year. Apparently, the next Destiny release. Uh, now I'm not really playing Destiny as much anymore, so that one kind of sunk to the bottom of the news level for me. But that it would, you know, that is big for a lot of people. So uh, that was unfortunate. And uh, I think that's about it. All right, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I also want to thank all my patrons on Patreon. You guys definitely helped make this possible. You guys are awesome, so thank you for that. And there will be links to all my social media and Patreon in the uh, description below if you're interested in helping support the channel. All right, guys, that's all I got for now. I want to thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.